every Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cameo in comics? Maybe. follow me here on facebook and instagram for more daily content more of that at the end of course drop a like and subscribe to the channel but we're going to drop in and talk about basically what i made up is a list of what i think is all the teenage mutant ninja turtles cameos over the years in different comics stuff like that i'm not going to include here the main titles or their spin-off series is stuff like you know turtle mania or body count or turtle soup where the main characters in the book are actually the turtles uh, and i'm also not going to talk about stuff like casey jones where casey jones is specifically a turtles character it doesn't exist outside of the turtles universe uh but i will talk about stuff like you saw you jimbo or future doid which are sort of in universe stuff but the turtles aren't as important to characters as they are to casey jones but we'll jump into i've got a lot of books to talk about so i kind of hey, we'll, we'll speed run through it i've done a couple of these character breakdowns in the past uh, I, I did a silver surfer one i have a bizarre one that's gonna be coming out um so I figured this is kind of like that, but a little bit different when I'm talking about more individual books, uh, kind of like I'm doing that in the series, but this is under more of a different umbrella than just appearances and main appearances and, and story arcs, stuff like that. This is all Turtles cameos that I could find or that I could remember off top, um, basically over the years. So we're going to jump into, they're sort of in order for release uh, date, but I don't think it's an exact order. But uh, we'll jump into Yusaki Ojima number one by Mirage Studios, which begins the Turtles arc, which goes all the way through issue three, where they actually make the cover. Uh, but issue one, two, and three all have uh, uh, all are part of this Turtles arc. But then we jump over to the Flaming Carrot number 27 with this classic topic file and cover featuring the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Flaming Carrot. Uh, this is a book I remember getting hot pre-COVID. Um, but it's just, it's a great cover, and it's a cool book to keep an eye out for, especially in the cheap ends. Future Story number 1 by Mirage Studios is also a super early TMNT appearance. Cult number 2 is done by KZ Comics, which is a super small comic publisher, and the first print of this book, it's crazy, there's multiple prints, but the first print includes a Leonardo pinup by Peter Liard, and it's only the first 3,000 copies had this uh, pin up it. So it's definitely an overlooked book. It's something you can probably find in those dollar bins. It's just kind of, it's a neat thing. Moving on, we got Grimjack number 26. It's an early color appearance for the team at NT. And the, uh, the team goes on and visits Munden's Bar, which is kind of cool. And uh, the turtle story was illustrated by Eastman and Liard, the, who I will call the, uh, the duo throughout this episode. Uh, Equin, the Uncivilized number three, is an obvious Cerebus knockoff. Um... You know, it's the second, car car second cameo appearance, excuse me, of a character called Red Shetland, I guess. You know, whatever that means. I'm, I'm not super familiar with the title. Tweet your own. But there is a one panel cameo of two of the four turtles. And there's also a Smurf being what we'll call emasculated in this book. So it's one of those books that's more like poking fun at the industry and stuff like that. It's just a weird thing. Anything goes number five, the road trip five page story. Uh, about the theme NT, I think is also done by the duo, uh, and it's got this great cover and a four also has a four page crumb story, and this series is kind of cool. It was published uh, to fund defense money in a lawsuit uh, against Comic Journal uh, over writer. It's all a long story, but it's kind of a neat, neat book uh, with a, with a cool bit of history behind it. You saw your gentleman number ten by Fanographics is uh, first periods of Jisan, who is like the, the wolf villain for Yusagi. It's also an early Leo solo appearance, separate from the team. Across the one by Mirage Studios. This one's a bit of a stretch because the turtles don't actually show up, even though there's a turtle troop in the book. Uh, but Liard illustrates a story featuring the Triceratons, and uh, Kevin Eastman has a six-page story. Um, although this is supposed to be a series... Uh, it was only made for the one issue. And it's kind of neat where, like, the Triceratons are in Universe Team and T characters. And you got the Turtle Troop. But there's no actual Turtles here in the cameo. But East Middle Yard do have a six-page story inside Grunts number one. Uh, seemingly in Universe. Then we'll talk about the Quest for Dreams Lost one shot here. Uh, Mirage did a lot of those charity books. Kind of like the, the comic journal thing I talked about before. And this one was released to fund uh, literacy volunteers for chicago which is really neat something a little bit different and uh 
In this issue, there's a small story about Eastman and Liard, uh, which features the Turtles alongside other stories uh, featuring Troll Lords characters and Wordsmith and stuff like that. So it's kind of a cool thing. Again, a lot of these are going to be Donovan Fines. Uh, some of her low print runs and, and just random mini books over the years. Like Puma Blues, uh, number 20. It's got a backup story featuring a future Raf. Uh, basically, um, it's it's done by the duo. And it kind of mar- was made to ma- match the current Mirage continuity. Because they were doing that like future Turtles story. Kind of similar to like, the, what they did uh, as of recently with the Turtles with uh, The Last Ronin. And the Lost Years and all that kind of stuff that's finally coming out now. Then we have an interesting book, Pal- uh, Palestron Cafe, I think is how you pronounce it. One through four is a four-issue anthology series, and every issue has a team and NT story. And one to four has Casey Jones backups that are later colorized and put into Casey Jones number one. Uh, part four was published uh, to Casey Jones number two. And the uh, pa- Palestron Cafe title was canceled. And it was supposed to be an ongoing, I believe. But it was canceled. And the leftover Casey Jones story would become uh, the self-titled series later on. Which is 5 and 6 being added to Casey Jones number 2. Which is kind of neat. Uh, they still had the unfinished story that they were to colorize and publish in the Casey Jones series. Digital Webbing number 24 has a team at NT short story. That uh, is included in this issue along with that awesome cover. Hero Comics 2012, an IDW one-shot, uh, which has stories including the TMNT. Uh, some of the best creators come together to put this book out. And again, it's another one that funds a, uh, a, a cause. This one being the Heroes Initiative, which is uh, something that's deeply rooted in the comic industry and heavily pushed by guys like George Perez. Then we have the CBS action zone number one which i see in dolphins all the time which is kind of cool thing it's got this jim lee cover the uh cbs one shot includes the turtles the wildcats and the skeleton warriors which is pretty cool so it's it's a cool book to keep an eye out for four low or uh, four low four low i think so, i don't know something like that 47 48 and 52 the archie crew adds backup stories to an ongoing antarctic uh press title about other anthropomorphic animals and uh somewhere's in this, uh, and then those issues with Turtles backups, I believe, and stuff like that. Saga Hedgehog number 10 by Archie Comics uh, has the Turtle team make a little cameo appearance in this one panel, pop it in the wrong sewers and the wrong comic. Preteen Dirty, uh, gr- preteen Dirty Geen Kung Fu Kangaroos. I think I, I, I miswrote that. I think it's Dirty Green, but whatever. Either way, it's one of those obvious Turtles parodies, and uh, they do have a cameo of the Bandana Heroes in this issue. Uh, and there was a ton of these parodies, like uh, Gangrene, uh, Jiu-Jitsu Gerbils, Adolescent Black Belt Hamsters, and there's a ton of them. I'll dedicate this spot to all the all these issues. I'm sure the Turtles made unofficial cameos in all of them, because again, they're all, you know, parodies of the Turtles. So we'll dedicate this spot to all those different books. They're kind of, some of them are full kind of cool and then some honorable mentions some advertisements and Goblin cook number one is first picture of fusion toy but it's also the first ever ad for team nnt number one the self-published book by eastman and Liade that were um it was literally made in the garage funny enough Goblin cook number two also has an ad for team nnt number one and but a comic book sampler number two by george miller this has a four thousand print run so it's not a book you see really ever it has a super early team nnt cover done by the duo which is pretty cool. Comic Journal 89 has an early advertisement printed for um, Team NC number one. It has this uh, image of Leonardo in it, which is pretty cool. Amazing Heroes number 45 is a solicitation for Team NC number one and a preview also of Black Suit Spidey. Uh, so that's kind of what makes this book a little infamous. And, uh, and no one really talked about the Team NC solicitation inside of it, which I believe was for the later printings. This, I don't believe this was uh, solicitations for the original print. I think this is one they were getting around to doing like the third and the fourth prints, if I'm not mistaken, is when they solicited in stuff like Basic Heroes. Comic Collector Magazine number six is the first depic- uh, depiction of Team NT in color. I can't find any evidence of this other than Key Collector saying so, uh, but is that true? Very possibly may be. New Age number one by Fantagraphics is the first color image of Team NT used as advertisement, uh, and also Fugitoid is with them in this awesome image. Comics interview number 27, Eastman and Liard 
have a Turtles cover on this one, and there's an interview of the duo on the inside. And I think I can round everything off with the collected Gizmo number one. It is a one shot, and I believe uh, there, it's actually a trade of all six issues in the Gizmo series by Mirage, if I'm not mistaken. But apparently, this has a Team NT connection. I'm actually unaware of this, and I don't know if it's in the original six issues or if it's actually in this collected one shot. I don't, or is there an extra backup in it? I'm not sure. I've never read it myself, and I, I saw it on uh, some articles I was reading doing research for this video, but I couldn't figure out what the connection to the TNT was. But let me know down below if you have any of these books. If you think I missed any, let me know because I very well might have. Um, I, did, I did a good amount of research into this, book, into this video. I am semi-confident in my list, but I don't know. Let me know down below if I missed any, if any of these you have, any of these you haven't heard of before, all kinds of stuff like that. And of course, follow me here on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I drop stuff throughout the week on the channel, on both uh, social media accounts, and then of course, the Facebook group Phantoms Unleashed, where there's daily discussions, posts about me, from me, other people, you know, different comic books, all kinds of stuff like that. So that's all like that in the description, I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know what characters you want to see me break down next, if you want to see me do something more like this, where I talk about like cameos and and stuff like that, or if you'd rather me just go more like a Silver Surfer video where I talk about a specific character and, and their key issues over the years. I believe Bizarro is the next one I'm going to do, but uh, let me know down below which ones you want to see me tackle. And until next time, peace.